Your whole world changes the day you decide to stop working for free. Last time on the video, I talked about the evolution of regular dude, and no, I don't mean that gender specific, it refers to women too, but I'm a caveman, just go with the dude. When you go from regular Joe or Jane to business person, or, or to being a business. And we talked about when, when you build, when you accomplish something, you fill a need, you overcome an obstacle, people see that and they start flocking to you to say, how'd you do it? Inflection point number one is where you start giving advice. You start giving it for free, most people. And then eventually the volume gets overwhelming. If you're accomplishing something in public, people notice the volume gets overwhelming. You start falling behind, you start feeling bad. You start trying to decide, well, I can help these people, but not these people. You start to triage your help cases, if you will. And then everything changes. You hit inflection point number two, and that's when somebody says, what if I paid you? A lot of times, if you're anything like me, it's a shock. Like when the first person asked you for advice, the first person that says, I'll pay you to put me ahead of the line and to have a specific scheduling time. Let's make this a semi-professional thing. How about 50 bucks for an hour worth of coaching? At first, again, it's a shock. You don't, it may not ever have occurred to you that you could sell your advice or your expertise. And at first you might push back. It, the idea of being paid for what you've been giving away for free may even be somewhat offensive to you. Eventually you kind of rationalize it and you go, okay, well, I've been making economic decisions so far of prioritizing certain groups over others. Why shouldn't I get compensated for what is a scarce resource, which is your free time. So first you push back, first you might even refuse to take pay and, and do it for free and just be flattered that they offered. But eventually you kind of give in because that's what a free market is. And once you start doing that, once you start selling your time and your expertise, then you've got to make the decision, well, what is my time worth? We all trade money for time. We've all been on the other end of that spectrum. If you ever eat out, what are you doing? You're trading money for time. I can cook myself a perfectly good hamburger, or I can go to Burger King and pay someone else to make it for me. What would take me half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, depending on the quality, I can go to the drive through and get in five minutes. I've just got to pay somebody else for their time to cook for me. I personally despise yard work, hate it with a burning passion. So I pay someone else to cut my lawn and trim the hedges and whatever else has to be done out there, fertilize. I trade my money to buy time. What would take me hours per week, per month, I pay someone else to do. We've all been on that end of the spectrum. Suddenly. When somebody's paying you for your expertise, you're on the other end of it. Now I'm trading my time for money. And usually if you're going through this evolution, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom, dad, whatever. Usually if you're going through this evolution, you have a nine to five that's paying the bills. I did, still do. And that is your number one priority, or darn well better be. Your number one priority is the nine to five and then I think I said last time, 1A and 1B, 9 to 5, and family. They, they kind of go hand in hand. You wouldn't have a full-time day job if you didn't have responsibilities. Or at least I wouldn't. But those are your top priorities. Any time that you sell better not come from the 9 to 5. It's going to come from that free time. Well, what else could you do with your free time? Fun stuff. Spend time with your family. Hobbies. Things that you like to do. So suddenly you're making real economic decisions. How many hours of workout time, TV time, making ships in a bottle time, whatever you love to do, stamp collecting, 
How much of that time are you willing to sell and what is it worth? What is it worth to you to cough up time where you could do fun things to do work, extra work, above and beyond what you have to do from nine to five? And so you start looking at, well, what do I make hourly on my salary? At least this was how I evolved. What do I make hourly for the salary I was making at the time? And then you make the decision, well, I'm not just going to charge that because your employer gets a bulk discount on your time for that safety and security of that paycheck every month, every two weeks, whatever it is, workout's still going, okay. For that safety and security of knowing that you have a paycheck and knowing that you have some barriers in place where they can't just fire you on a whim, you give them a bulk discount on your labor. The agreement is I'm gonna work eight, nine, 10 hours a day for you, five days a week, and in exchange, you can't just fire me on a Monday, cut me my last paycheck and say, thanks for the memories. So you have to charge more than that. The person that hires me for an hour to do their resume is not getting the same discounted rate that my full-time employer gets paying me X number of dollars per year for 40, 50 hours a week. So you mark something up on that. You may start thinking of, well, what do I pay to not cut my lawn. What is that worth to me? If someone came one time and said, I'll cut your lawn and save you an hour, what is the most you would pay for that? What well, probably gives you a pretty good idea what your time is worth. And so they've got to pay you more than that to make it worth your while to cough up an hour of your free time to do that piece of labor for them. No matter how much you enjoy it, it still work. And so that brings us to inflection point number three. Eventually, you start realizing, hey, I can't just do this on an ad hoc basis. Because once it's one or two people, it's not a big deal. Hey, just Venmo me 75 bucks, whatever it is. But once it becomes a stream, once word gets out, you do one person's resume and then they tell five friends and those five friends want that service as well, probably at that same price. Now you've got to put a structure in place. Now you need systems. And so inflection point number three is you've got to get some systems in place. You can't just Venmo money and just kind of word of mouth the price. Eventually you want to be fair and you want to be a little bit structured. You want to give everybody kind of the same quality service. So what do you do? Well, you go get a, some sort of structured pay portal. Maybe Venmo or Zelle or whatever is, is good enough for you. Maybe you need something a little bit more formal. Now you've got to manage your time. You've got demands of the nine to five that have to be blocked off. You've got demands with family generally that have to be blocked off, you have trips to do. and But you need to be able to offer people the ability to grab chunks of your time. Well, now you need a formal scheduling service. So maybe you get Calendly uh, or so other valid ones, I've, I've used some. After a while, you start putting three, four, five systems in place, and they don't all speak to each other all that well. And you think, well, maybe, maybe it would be better to have one system to rule them all, if you will. So maybe you start paying for a system. Now you get the paid Calendly, and think about that evolution. Suddenly, you're no longer just using the freemium site. Now you're paying a system to make your conduct of business more fluid and easy to manage. And that inflection point number three, where you start building systems in, now starts bringing us to inflection point number four, which is where you start thinking, is this no longer me just doing paid favors for people? Are we now an actual business? That's enough for today. We've hit two more inflection points. Folks, I hope you're enjoying this content. If you do, please uh, cut me a like. Smash that like button, as my friends tend to say. Uh, drop a comment. Tell me what you'd like to hear next. I'm going to continue this series. I've got lots of other ideas. As always, Semper Fidelis, and I'll talk to you later.